Data, data, bitch. Stats, figures, numbers, evidence. The key factor is the numbers. Almost nothing will have more impact on how you live the rest of your life in the United States or the kind of country that your children and grandchildren live in. Data, data, bitch. Than how Congress sets these numbers. For the 200 years, from 1770 to 1970, this country took in about 250,000 immigrants a year. Evidence. Congress brings a lot more than that today. And I'm going to show you the future that current numbers, if not changed, will give us. I find this to be an incredibly frightening future. Some of you are going to be angry when you see it. But please remember that if immigration is a problem, the problem is not immigrants. The problem is immigration policy and the officials who set that policy. If you're an immigrant, nothing I say here tonight is a criticism of you. You have the same stake in America's future as I do. We're sticking to numbers tonight. Good, solid, non-controversial numbers based on data and projections from the U.S. Census Bureau. Now, this was the United States at the end of the first census in 1790 when it found four million people. The green that you see rising above the blue is the population growth that would have happened if Congress had not forced higher immigration. It would rise to 257 million in 2020 and then basically stabilize through 2050. This was the Earth Day vision that the class of 1970 had chosen. Instead, Congress constantly increased immigration from 1970 on. Congress increased immigration levels from the 250,000 that was traditionally and from the 50s and 60s to 425,000 a year. And then in the 1980s, Congress increased immigration still further from the 425,000 a year to 635,000 per year. That wasn't enough for Congress. Population wasn't growing fast enough. So in 1990, they passed a, another big increase. And since 1990, Congress has been running immigration at more than a million a year, four times higher than the traditional level. Now, this doesn't even include the illegal immigration. The American people never asked for any of these increases. Polls show that there was never a time when much more than 10% of the American people wanted higher immigration. In 1996, President Clinton's National Commission on Sustainability urged big reductions in immigration, back to something like traditional level, in order to allow the population of the United States to stabilize so we could be a sustainable society. But Congress ignored those recommendations. Now, this is what the census says actually happened since 1970. This is the actual population growth to 2010. The red represents the population growth forced by Congress and its immigration decisions. Instead of the U.S. never reaching the third hundred million, it reached the third hundred million before 2010. And for the first time in our history, the majority of our population growth came from new immigrants and the births to immigrants. Using Census Bureau projections, fertility and mortality, I would like to know what lies in our future. Let's see what's behind that curtain. As you can see, we are headed to add our fourth 100 million by 2040. Look at the difference between that red line that Congress is taking us to and the green line, which was the choice of the American people. Now let's see where we're headed by the end of this century. To see the top of this, let's pull this down so instead of the 200 million, we'll start down here at 300 million. And as you can see, we will be adding our fifth 100 million in 2070 and our sixth 100 million just before the end of the century, before apparently hitting about 625 million people. Look around you. The people of the United States are not able to achieve the quality of life they want with 300 million people. This is not something that could be. It's not something that might be. This is something that will be if we don't change the immigration numbers. That is a future that does not have to happen. We can make the right choice now.